Uh, the video is going to start in a second on how I removed the heads and the head gaskets from my 2002 Cadillac uh, DeVille DHS North Star 4.6 liter. Um, I'm doing this backwards. I'm making this part of the video first now that I've done the job so I can just explain a couple things that you're going to see on this video. Um, I did this with the engine still in the car. Uh, a lot of people that I know said it couldn't be done or if it, it was damn near impossible. To me it didn't seem like it was that big of a deal, although at the time I was doing it I hit some, some tough spots. But I guess in retrospect, uh, you know, the job really wasn't all that tough. Um, I've never done a head gasket job before on a Cadillac. I've only done one head gasket job uh, in my entire life and that was on my brother's 93 Firebird which was a lot different because it didn't have overhead cams and I didn't have to fool with the timing chains uh, and all that stuff like on this car. Uh, at this time the heads are at the machine shop, they're being looked at, they're being pressure tested and I recommend that you do the same. Um, and uh, I'd like you to do me a favor if you're going to use this video to help you and I hope it does. Uh, try to watch the entire video first because along the way I'll make some mistakes and I, I might not catch it until the shot after that. So you'll see me for, for example, there's two things that come to mind. Uh, I was talking on here about, um, uh, for example, removing the rear head and I, there's a shot where I, I indicate that two bolts have to come out from behind, uh, you know, re reaching up from under the car. There's a 15 millimeter bolt that, that, that bolts uh, on uh, like a, it's a bracket I guess it bolts on from the transmission to the back of the head and you have to reach that from under the car. That does have to come off but in the shot before it I indicate that, that there's a uh, another bolt that connects to a, a, uh, like the exhaust manifold uh, shield and that doesn't have to come off. So I correct that in the following shot. So the point is is do me a favor and watch the entire video because sometimes I correct some mistakes. Another uh, example that comes to mind is I indicate in one shot that three of the um, water crossover bolts need to be removed and it's really just two and I and again I correct that later on. So watch the entire video before you you use this to help you uh, and, and do the job because you'll see the mistakes I made along the way. Um, one thing I need to mention too is when you remove the engine cover you're going to have to press on a new seal. There's an engine cover seal that, that seal comes with the engine cover uh, slash timing chain uh, gasket. So it's a little round seal. You'll have to pull the old one off and you'll have to press it in and then that wraps around uh, the crankshaft. Uh, so just be aware of that. You don't see that in the video because this video is of me just removing the heads and removing the gaskets, uh, not putting it all back on. I didn't, sh I'm not going to show that part of the video because really you just watch this video in reverse and that's how you put everything back together. But just be aware that you are going to have to press on a new seal uh, on the engine cover or the timing chain cover, whatever you want to call it. Uh, in this video, uh, I think there were two things that come to mind as being the hardest things for me. Uh, the first one was there's a bracket that holds the, uh, trans the transmission mount, which is on the uh, passenger side of the car. You access it from the passenger side front wheel well. I could not get that bracket off and you really need to get it out of the way so you can remove the 10 millimeter bolts and hold the engine timing chain cover on. Uh, I couldn't get it off, the best I could do was loosen it and, and get it out of the way. It, it was a, I had a devil of a time trying to get that thing off uh, and it's, I really don't see any easy way to do it. So just if you can, get that thing out of the way and that was, that took some time. Uh, the second thing that took a lot of time was uh, I didn't realize at first that you, although you remove, uh, when you're dealing with the front head, the, the left head, you take the uh, exhaust manifold off, you know, right up front, you loosen it from the head. But regarding the back head, you actually have to take the engine um, head off connected to the, the exhaust manifold. In other words, you take the exhaust manifold off with the head and, you, and in order to do that you disconnect the manifold where it meets the exhaust pipe flange. I had a tough time getting those bolts off. Uh, not only were they hardened on there from, from years of rust and heat, I had a hard time getting an angle on them uh, with, with the socket. So I actually had to use a jack and, 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 and um, angle the engine uh, a little bit so I could get the torque on there to remove those bolts. So those are the two hardest things I thought. Um, do me a favor and take a lot of photos of when you remove the timing chains. 
uh, because you're going to need that as a guide to put everything back together where the timing chain tensioners go. It's not a difficult job, but you don't want to run into a situation where you don't have the, uh, the idea of how to put it all back together. So some photos probably would help. Uh, there's lots of diagrams on the internet, you can get those. Um, I replaced my time or my camshaft position sensor because mine was really in bad shape. You might want to too. You'll see in the video where you do have to remove that camshaft position sensor in order to get the rear timing, the rear head timing chain uh, just to slide down. Um, I was told that you have to put the harmonic balancer bolt on really tight, and if you don't do it correctly uh, and you start the engine up and you don't have any oil pressure, then turn the car off because you don't have the bolt on tight enough. Uh, the tightness of the bolt is it determines whether the uh, the oil pump is going to work correctly. So again, if you turn this car on after the entire job is finished and you don't have oil pressure, turn it off immediately and crank down that harmonic balancer bolt because that's probably the culprit. Um, in this video, you're going to see my piston heads, uh, particularly I think number number one and uh, number two. I can't remember, but the, some of the piston heads were really dark. They had carbon on top. Uh, you're going to have to clean those up. Just use some WD-40, a scotch spray pad, whatever. Uh, just be gentle. Don't, don't scratch anything. Don't use anything too abrasive. But get that carbon off because you don't want to create any hot spots when you put everything back together. So your piston head should be relatively clean. Um, I've decided at this point, given all the shit I've been through, uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and put uh, inserts in the car. Uh, as I indicated in the video, you can you do inserts or studs, but you really can't do studs with the engine still in the car, uh, at least from what I've been told. So inserts are the only option. In the beginning of the video, I indicated I was just going to buy some new head bolts and put those back in. But after all this trouble, I, I might as well just go ahead and, and, and put the inserts in. There's a ton of videos on YouTube on how to do that, so I'm not going to explain that here. But, uh, you know, after all this work and everything, it, I guess it'd be a shame to go ahead and buy some new head bolts, put them in, and then they pull out. Even though, as I indicated on the video, my head bolts looked really good. I did not see any metal shavings. I didn't see anything wrong with them when I pulled them up, and they certainly weren't loose. So uh, I was pretty lucky in that regard. So I hope this video helps you. And uh, it, I, I couldn't find any videos on YouTube on how to do this job with the engine still in the car. So that's why I created this video. and. I got a little bit of a cold, as you can probably hear, because I, I've been on the ground uh, a lot and outside working on this thing over the last few days. Okay, it's October 26, 2016. This is the first day that I'm going to be working on the head gasket on this 2002 Cadillac DeVille. Um, I haven't started doing anything yet, but there is no engine cover on the top. Uh, the bolts became stripped and I had to rip it off so that that engine cover is missing right now. Uh, first thing I have to do is uh, remove the uh, the coils. Uh, you notice I have coil packs. Uh, the left bank and the right banks over there. So I'm going to remove the, the coils first and then go from there. Uh, I should also mention that the coil packs um, and I'll let you know in a second how many bolts are in each one, but there are uh, a number of bolts to hold these coil packs on. You can see three of them right there in the picture, but then there's some below, uh, and those require a 10 millimeter socket. What I did is I just took these, um, these bolts off, and I want to make it clear. There's one, two, three, I think I said three a minute ago, there's four. One, two, three, four, they're 10 millimeter bolts. Then on the bottom, there's one, two, three, four. So you've got eight bolts that you're going to have to take off in order to get the coil pack off. And in order to get the coil pack off, you know, you're going to have to take this harness off here. All right. And take this breather out there. And the coil pack, you'll have to play with it depending on how long it's been in there. But it should just pop up. All right. Here's, here's this coil pack right here. You can see you got your spark plug boots here. We're going to work on those. But uh, at this point, we took this coil pack off. Now you can turn that off. It's recording? Yeah. Alright, I took the bolts out of the coil in the back bank. And in order to get this thing out, you're going to have to deal with the 
check valve here or whatever the fuck this thing's called now you're going to disconnect this little one and put this aside I've already disconnected the clamp here and unfortunately or fortunately depending on how you look at it mine's disconnected down there this is not supposed to look like this you're going to have a harder time you're going to have to disconnect it down there you're probably going to have to work blind but mine's already not working and quite frankly this hasn't been working in years and the car's been running fine but that's another story so you're going to need that to come off now here's the oxygen sensor for the back bank and you're going to have to lift this tab up and disconnect this you're going to need to disconnect that you can you can push it back down one end back down there but you're going to need to have that disconnected or otherwise the coil pack back here won't come off and just like we did before you have to remove the uh, connection there and you're gonna have to get it out sometimes this isn't easy you may have to pry a little bit with a screwdriver but this one fortunately is not that bad so we're gonna take this coil pack off and you can go ahead and turn that off while I play all right this is a good time now to take the boots off and this is not any fun but you're going to have to pull them off and sometimes they come out easy like that one and I've got two back there that are stuck so I want to play around with those in a minute but oh, there we go sometimes these come out so nice they don't I guess there's a tool GM makes to pull those out I don't know fuck it you could probably use some pliers if you're real careful but if you're not you'll rip the ears off on the top this part will rip off which you don't want to happen so just play with it but you might as well take these off now put them aside packs off from both sides now and I took the, pl the spark plug boots off the next step is to take off the water pump uh, pulley and this contraption here is not not easy if I recall there's a lot of 10 millimeter bolts but this has to come off you've got some bolts here you got some bolts down there um, and you'll you'll figure that out you'll see what's holding this out but we've got to get this shroud off and then eventually we're going to take the water pump pulley off now the reason we're going to do that is because the water pump pulley is connected to uh, a camshaft the camshaft turns and it turns the water pump pulley what we're trying to do the ultimate goal in this step is to get this valve cover off you can't get the valve cover off until you get the water pump pulley off and you'll see why when this is uh when this shroud is off and so on but anyway there's some bolts here that hold the valve cover on and I'm going to get to that pretty soon and get those removed but really the next step I'd say is to get the shroud off and, re and remove this you'll need a pulley puller um, and uh, I'll show you how I remove that in a minute one thing I want to mention is in order to release these bolts down here you're going to really need to remove this thing and you're probably going to need to remove this hose uh, in order to, to get this air check valve off and move that around so again I, I, probably in the next shot you're going to see this removed and you're probably going to see the hose removed in order to get these bolts off down here and again the ultimate goal is to get this shroud off and the water pump pulley removed pulled from the camshaft now you can see uh, what I had to do is to get this out of the way but I just wanted to point something out. I have to remove this check valve here. So I took this clamp off. I removed this hose. And this little guy here, I wanted to show you, it plugs onto the check valve. This goes over here. It goes underneath this thing. And it plugs in here. Now, this one end, of course, goes into the check valve. When this branch is off, the other end goes here into the throttle body. So again, there's a V here, all right, on this thing. This one goes to the, the air check valve. This one goes into the throttle body. I can see where I'm going to forget that, so that's why I want to get this on the tape, all right, where this where this goes here. And of course, this is connected to all this shit back here. But again, right here to the throttle body, other end here to the check valve. It's connected here at this V. All right, what I did is I took the, um, the, the all these 10 millimeter bolts off and I removed the pulley puller, I'm, the pulley tensioner, I'm sorry, 
and I removed the belt, which came out from behind here. So the, the tensioner's gone. There's two bolts that go into that slide into here that, that that hold the tensioner on. That's that's all away and put in a baggie. That's pretty self-explanatory. Now we got to pull the water pump pulley off, which is connected to the camshaft. I got a puller here, and that's what we're going to do next. Okay, I got I got the pulley puller on. You notice I'm holding this one stationary, the one with the bolt, and then this one here I'm turning, and I'm turning this, it's slowly pulling the water pump pulley off. And I'm just going to do this nice and slow, and eventually this thing will come off. It's pulling it off the, the camshaft, and that'll be nice because once we get this thing off then we can start working on the bolts to the valve cover the good news is there's only one of these water pump pulleys and there is no pulley to remove on the back bank the back bank's not going to be very easy to remove the valve cover but uh, at least there's we don't have to deal with removing a pulley we'll get to that later anyway we're almost done pulling this off Getting easier to turn. go and you can see here's the pulley the water pump pulley and here is the camshaft which held it on and uh, just so you know there's a like a I don't know what you call it a gasket but this is replaceable here when you get your valve cover set along with your head gasket set and they'll give you a new one of these and this this creates a seal that way there's oils not coming out of here so you'll get a new one of these I got the bolts off and now I'm trying to get this thing off. I can't remember. It's not sliding off very easily, so I'm going to take this cover off the, the camshaft and maybe that'll help it slide off better. I can't remember if I had to do that before or not, but uh, I'm going to find out real quick when I take this off if it's if the uh, valve cover slides off, because right now I'm having a real hard time getting the valve cover to slide this way and over the camshaft, so I forgot, it's been a long time, and uh, I'll know in a minute. Alright, now I got this fucker off. Um, I did take this camshaft seal off, and that seemed to give, give me some help to get this off. It wasn't easy. Uh, this is a valve cover gasket. But what I wanted to show you is where the bolts are on this thing. You've got a, a bolt here, 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 and here. All right, so you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine bolts that hold this fucker on, okay? So just be aware of that. Here's your gasket. All right, now, here's your cam, one of your camshafts. Here's another one. Here's one of your timing chains, your sprockets. This is going to become a big fucking hassle later on. We're going to have to take this off. But I just wanted you to identify the parts here. All right, so here you go. Here's your timing chain, one of your timing chains. Of course, you got to, you know, you got two more camshafts on the other bank and two sprockets with another timing chain. And of course you got your primary chain down at the bottom, so you really have three chains you're going to be dealing with. But this is it. Then you've got your, your head bolts right here. And uh, now, some of you may be looking at this and have done this job before and say, well, why don't you get this hose out of the way, take the cooling fans out, drain, you know, drain the radiator, get the, get the radiator out, and you can do that. In fact, if you were to do that, it would have made it a lot easier getting these bolts out on the bottom part of the valve cover. That's true. Uh, I'm working in my garage right now. It's late at night. I don't want to drain this thing in my garage. I'd rather do it outside tomorrow. But if you wanted, you could drain that first, and it would give you more room in this area here 
to do your work to get these bolts off because you're going to eventually have to remove this anyway. So again, if you want, and if you got the time, if you're outside, go ahead and just drain everything, get the cooling fans out, and take the radiator out anyway. Um, it's been a couple days. I haven't worked on the car. Today I'm starting again. And what I want to do is uh, let you know that uh, I, I am doing this. Uh, some people may look at this and have done this job before and say I'm doing this ass backwards. Well, there's a reason why. I wanted to take the head bolts out without going through the whole rigmarole and see what they look like because these head bolts are known to have problems. Most people replace them with inserts or studs, uh, but in, in almost all cases on the internet, you, say, you see people say that these either break off uh, or you pull up the uh, aluminum along with it. So I took all 10 head bolts out off of this bank to see what they look like, and they all look really good, actually. And this is important to me, and this is the reason why I'm doing it in this order, because if I broke these head bolts off, then I'd say, fuck it, that's it. I'm just going to have the car towed out of here, and that's the end of that. Uh, I'm not going through all the trouble to uh, take the car in and have a, a, head, a broken head bolt taken out of the head. Just fuck it. So, so far, so good. I've taken the, the 10 head bolts off here. I'm going to take the, head, the 10 head bolts off in the back bank, and then we're going to start getting serious about getting this job done. But I first want to see what these head bolts look like to see whether I'm going to go any further with this job. Okay, I um, have taken off the uh, eight of the nine rear bank um, valve cover bolts, but and you'll see how to get them off. I mean, sometimes you might spend 15 minutes getting one of them off, particularly that one in the back corner. That's that's no fun back there. But the one I got to point out to you, there's one motherfucker in this entire group, and that's over here where the EGR valve is and I can't really get the camera in there but deep down in there um, there's a bolt right, right up against the EGR valve some guys I saw on the internet said to remove the EGR valve um, I've done this job before just very slowly using a 10 millimeter wrench but just be aware that there's a bolt back there you'll, you'll need a flashlight to see it it's right back in the um, EGR valve and right slammed up against a brace and um, it's going to be hard to get but you can do it you're just going to have to do half turn half turn half turn until you get it out but that that's uh, without a doubt and you'll agree when you do this job that's going to be the toughest bolt to remove back here all right I um, took out all the bolts uh, the reason I'm showing you this right now is this 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 thing, and I know this from experience. I've done this once before. Th this valve cover will not come out. Okay, it, 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 you just don't have the room. You know, it just will. It's got to lift over the um, the sprockets here, and it's got to come out. Luckily, there's no camshaft like you had over here um, that you have to pull it through. But it, there's just not not enough room. So what you have to do is you have to get an 18 millimeter socket and you have to take the uh, engine uh, the two engine cradle bolts back there and then there's one up in the front they're all 18 millimeter you just have to loosen them loosen them where you know they're still threaded they're still connected but you know you don't want them out the bolts completely off but you have to loosen them and then the engine will drop a little bit and then you, and that'll give you the room to pull the, the valve cover off so again there's two cradle bolts back there one up here, all three of them are 18 millimeter. Loosen them, but maybe two or three turns threaded before they actually come out. That's where you want it. Okay, we took the rear valve cover uh, off, and you know we absolutely had to lower the engine cradle in order to give us the, the room to get that off. It's, it's not a problem. One thing I wanted to mention is uh, we had to, we had to un unbolt this uh, coolant hose. Uh, which actually uh, bolts on to here onto the intake manifold, but this is the, the hose that goes into the reservoir. We had to move this out of the way because this was in the way, so you could do that. You know, there's just two little uh, clips here, you, you screw them off, and anyway, I had to do that. Maybe you won't have to, but this here has been a real irritant to me, and I want to get rid of it. So I just want to explain something real quick. This orange or amber color looking thing uh, plugs in here. This goes to the check valve, which we took off. 
This one here, as I mentioned earlier, goes to the, check, the air check valve. And this one here goes to the throttle body. This is where the V branches off. So I'm going to disconnect this. But when we connect this back, back on, because I want to get rid of this thing, it's been an irritant. Uh, again, this longer one goes to the check valve. This goes to the throttle body right there near the plenium. And this here goes to the check valve back there. So. Okay. Uh, I have removed all 10 head bolts from the car and all of them look surprisingly good. I didn't see any aluminum shavings. Uh, they were really remarkable. And, uh, and I think I might just, just for the hell of it, just because I'm not really sure what to expect and how long this car is really going to last. The body looks like shit. It looks like it's got leprosy anyway. I think I'm just going to go ahead and put the regular head bolts in. Now, I know there's a bunch of people that are going to get pissed off when they hear that. They're going to say I need inserts or um, studs or whatever. That's true. But just for this job, just for shits and giggles, I think I'm just going to go ahead and put regular head bolts back in, torque it down, and if I have to do it again another year, then fuck it. I'll do it again. But the good news is I didn't see any aluminum shavings on the, on the head bolts, which gives me encouragement that maybe the threads are still good on this car. All right, the next thing I'm going to do right now is I'm going to remove the cooling fans and the radiator so I can get in there and I'm going I'm to have to remove eventually the alternator. And you can't get to the alternator unless you do that. So drain the, drain the coolant, get this hose out of the way right here. Get the cooling fans and the radiator out. You might have to loosen this this guy up a little bit, but just go ahead and give yourself some room in here because we got to get down in there now. That'll be the next project. Okay, I just wanted to show you. I took out the cooling fans and the radiator. That gives you a whole lot more room to work in the um, in the front. Um, and I have to confess, at this point, you know, I've replaced the valve covers. Uh, gaskets and so on, but I've never actually done a head gasket job. I per per should disclose that right now. So I'm just working from the manual. And this is where uh, my expertise uh, ends and uh, my reliance upon the uh, manual begins. So I know we're going to have to remove the alternator, which is, which is down there, because uh, that's bolted to the head. We're going to have to remove these um, some stuff here on the, I'm going to have to figure out what exactly, I don't know if the power steering pump has to come out uh, or what, but I know we're going to have to remove a lot of the pulleys and shit here in order to access the timing chain cover, uh, the engine cover and the timing chains. Um, as far, what really worries me at this point is access to the back head, uh, but we'll just have to figure that out. Obviously I'm going to do the easy part first, which is the left head here, the front head. So. What I'm going to do now is remove the uh, the alternator, which is down there, and then after that, I'm going to start working on removing the intake manifold. And there's a lot of bolts here. Now, I, I, now one thing about the intake manifold is uh, I believe the manual says to remove the fuel rail and disconnect the, the fuel lines and everything, which are right here. Uh, when I uh, when I replaced the um, the plenium before, um, I didn't do that. Uh, I didn't disconnect the fuel lines. What I did is I used a bungee cord and I suspended it from this latch here. And you'll see that in the, in the, probably in the next shot where I, I don't disconnect those fuel lines. I don't go through all that. I don't want to deal with that gas and smell it. So I just suspend the fuel rail. I disconnect the, the fuel injectors and I pull everything out. But I, um, I don't actually you know, disconnect the system. I just suspend it. So I, to me that worked even though the manual says you know, just go ahead and take everything off and disconnect it. I don't want to deal with that. So, more work, and I'll be back later with additional shots of the work I've done. I've done. You know, I'm, I'm back now in a second, and, and you know, I think I'd better point something out here. Uh, I'm going to do a step-by-step -step on this on this alternator, uh, just so I don't forget, and, and perhaps for someone who's never done this before, they, they know. First thing I'm going to do is remove this connector. Of course, the battery has to be disconnected because, you know, these are live wires. You don't want to be dealing with any sparks or anything. So disconnect the battery. Uh, I'm going to take this one off first, and I'm going to take this bolt right here off second. I think there's either a third or a fourth, but we'll figure that out. But again, we're removing the alternator. This comes off after the power is turned off from the battery. 
Okay, um, I just took off the alternator. It's been many years since I did this, uh, removed an alternator. You know, I forgot how difficult it was. I wouldn't exactly say this was easy, but I just want to point something out. Uh, these are all 15 millimeter bolts, and there's three bolts that hold this thing on. This one here, this long bolt, without a nut on it, just goes up there. And that, that, that goes straight up into here. You saw where I disconnected that. By, by the way, this is the, uh, this is the connector. Um, it's pretty dirty, but it is what it is. Um, all right, but what I want to explain is that there's two bolts here on the side of the alternator that hold it on. This little short guy goes on the top, and it just screws in. This bottom one was a little tricky because you don't really notice it at first, but it's actually a bolt with a nut on the end. They're both, actually all of these are 15 millimeter bolts. There's three that hold it on. This this little guy, this bigger bigger guy down here, I had to access from the bottom of the car. It's the only way I could get onto it. This one here I could get from the top of the car, reaching down. This is from the bottom reaching up. You got to go in from under the, the fender to to reach it. Um, it was kind of hard for me because I forgot how to do it, but maybe it'll be easier for you now that I'm explaining it. So these three bolts hold this thing on. Okay, just want to let you know I'm in the process of removing the fuel rail. I just took out the four fuel rail bolts that go here. I don't like this guy, he's in my way, so I'm probably going to disconnect them here and just let this hang over. But this is the tube that goes to the coolant recovery tank. I'm going to remove the fuel rail, I'm going to pull this out. These are 10 millimeter bolts, four 10 millimeter bolts. I believe there's another one right there that holds the fuel rail on. I'm going to have to take that off. And then you pull these, these things out after you disconnect the injectors. Um, you pull it out, there'll be O-rings, you know, hang on to those or replace them, whatever you want to do. But these pull, this pulls out and then, I'll, and then I'm going to suspend it, like I mentioned before. But uh, anyway, moving, moving along. Okay, I just wanted to show you that I just pulled up the fuel rail. Um, these are the O-rings I was talking about here. You know, keep an eye on them, you might want to replace them. I've, I've removed the injectors, I removed that bolt, or the cap that went on there. And now this is going to come up. It's starting to come up here, and then I'm going to try to suspend this from the top if I can, so I don't have to disconnect the fuel lines. So we'll see how this goes. Fuel rail goes. Fuel rail suspended. I just want to show you the bungee cord there. I don't have to disconnect all that shit. Um, I want to point a couple things out. This here got became loose. It's really not supposed to be loose, but this 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 is the uh, PCV valve and the hose. This goes inside. When I take the um, manifold off, you'll see where this connects to. But that, that came loose, that's no big deal. But uh, anyway, this, this plugs in right in the center. There'll be like a little nipple that this fits on. And then of course this fits on the back valve cover. Um, and I'm going to remove these bolts for the, uh, for the intake. Well, the thing I really want to show you is uh, um, I took this off many years ago to replace this, this rubber boot here, this plenium. And I made a note to myself in my notes that it would have been a whole lot easier instead of taking this whole damn thing off to just remove these three bolts and it should just lift right off. There's one here, there's one here, no, no, there's one right there, there's one right there, and then there's one behind there. I'm going to try to do that and see if my notes are correct. If I take those three, this thing should lift right out and I don't have to fool with anything else over there. Okay, I just want to let you know I removed the three bolts that hold the plenium or plenum or whatever the fuck you call that thing. Um, I haven't pulled out the manifold yet, uh, the intake manifold, but I wanted to show you what these bolts look like. The first the top one here and the, 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 the side one here are, on the left aren't too bad, but that, that one on the right, you, you literally have to work blind down in that crevice right there to get that bolt. I'm sure putting it in isn't going to be any fun, but it's down there in that crevice where I'm pointing. Okay, I pulled it off couple things I want to point out. It slid slid up real nice when you get these out, came right out. Um, you got to be careful when you pull this out, you don't break that off. So when, you, 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 when you're on the passenger side and you're pulling this thing off, just be careful, be mindful of that. Um, this is the PCV valve I mentioned. This, you know, goes into the rear valve cover. This here goes inside here. You probably can't see it, but there's a little nipple there, and it, it plugs on there. 
and this clip holds that in place. So be aware of that. Now, you know, you're going to have gaskets you're going to have to replace here. These are your intake manifold gaskets. This is your knock sensor. There's your starter. If you ever need to replace your starter, you can see it's a lot of trouble. And there's a pool of oil and coolant mixture, so you know what's going on there. And you can see your, you can see the heads starting to, you know, there's, there's the gasket. Okay. I took the uh, reservoir out, the coolant reservoir, to give me some more room for later on, but the major project I just finished was taking out the, the front motor mount. This is really not any fun. The motor mount is gone now. You can see the exhaust manifold bolt and the right cradle bolt. Then this the frame drops down a little bit, and that gives you the room to take this motor mount out. There's an 18 millimeter bolt that holds the bottom of that motor mount on, and then the rest are all 15 millimeter bolts. And that's what I want to show you because this thing was not very fun to get out. It can be done. Again, you have to literally take out the front two cradle bolts and let the frame drop. You might have to use a crowbar to pull the frame down a little bit, or the engine cradle down a little bit to get the motor mount out. And it comes out in pieces, and I'll show you that in a second. This is the uh, motor mount. These two 15 millimeter, bolts, 15 millimeter bolts bolt onto the head. These two bolt onto the block. In order to get this out, I had to actually remove this inside the car and take it out in pieces. But I put it back together. Um, this left, uh, well, the left, depending on how you're looking at, but when you're when you're facing the the motor mount, this one just has a regular 15 millimeter bolt you just take off. This one's a little more tricky. It's got this contraption over here. You got a 15 millimeter bolt that bolts onto here, and then this bolts onto the block elsewhere. And you're going to need to take this bolt out. Again, it's 15 millimeter. So this side here is connected to this guy, and this one's just a straight 15 millimeter bolt. Anyway, as I said, you're going to have to pull the engine cradle down a little bit. Sometimes you might even use a crowbar to get an extra inch or two to to lift it up enough to get this off. There's an 18 millimeter bolt that fits onto here that bolts under the engine cradle, but uh, there you have it. Uh, I just want to let you know I just took off the exhaust manifold bolts. There's two per lobe, so one, two, three, four, five, there's eight bolts. They're 13 millimeter bolts. I mean, you know, you're going to be working blind. I, I dread to know what it's going to be like to get the back bank off, but uh, anyway, I took them off. You know, they weren't actually weren't that hard to come out. When I did the head gasket on my brother's car, a 93 Firebird, uh, they were they were hell to get out. As a matter of fact, I think I, I broke one or two of them getting them out. We had to have them professionally taken out at the shop where they weld another bolt onto it. And Well, you know the trick. But anyway, um, what I did, as you can see, the exhaust manifold is, is loose. I did not disconnect it down there. At the flange, because I'm going to try not to, if I don't have to. I'm hoping the head will just come out and I won't have to do any more disconnecting, because this is loose. And when it comes out, then I'll, you know, I'll put a new gasket, an uh, exhaust manifold gasket, when I put the... I just want to let you know, I just had a very easy time getting this uh, tensioner off. I have one of these, it's a 15 millimeter bolt that holds it on right there. And I have one of these ratcheting wrenches it put it right on there and it came right off so you know we're gonna have to start getting this engine cover off so might as well start doing that but anyway the pulley came off 15 millimeter bolt when you put this back on there's a little groove that it fits in and then you bolt it down there's only one bolt to hold this on but there's a groove that holds it in that's what gives it tension and you'll figure that out but uh, anyway we're gonna start removing this part Eventually, you know, we're going to have to remove the water crossover bolts, too. And, uh, I don't know, I heard some guys say that they didn't take it completely off. They just loosened the bolts. But the problem is, is you got gaskets in there. You know, right there. I, uh, I took the power steering pump off. You know, I can't remember whether it needs to come off or not, according to the manual, but I took it off. 
Uh, I just took off the uh, idler here. And I'm glad I did too because when I spun it around with my finger, I could feel the bearings were shot in here. I never really heard it making any noise recently, but apparently it was on its last leg. I... Okay, um, I decided I'm going to try to work on this harmonic balancer. I've taken off the, the wheel for access. I've jacked it up. You can see there's the harmonic balancer there. I'm going to take the shroud off. It's give me some work, some access to work in there. But uh, that's basically going to be next. I know, I think in the manual it said this trans mount has to come out. I don't know about that. You might be able to just take the top bolt off up there. We'll have to see. I'm not into doing any more work than I have to. The things I wanted to explain is you might see the date down at the bottom here on the uh, recording. And it looks like this is taking place over multiple days. And it is. Um, but I'm not spending a whole lot of time each day working on this. So I don't want to give you the impression that this is taking days and days and days and days to do because if you really put your mind to it you can get a lot of this done uh, a lot quicker than I have it just you know I do a couple hours and then I go in the house I might do a couple hours more and then call it a day but one of the things I, I, I need to mention right now is I think where I left off last is the harmonic balancer and I went and got all that cleared off down there where I could access it. And I want you to know I could not get that bolt off with my own human strength. The uh, harmonic balancer bolt. It would not budge. Uh, and I reached a point where I couldn't even be stripping it. So what I did is I went on the internet to see if I could find any tricks. And I found one. And it's a great trick and it worked in, in just a fraction of a second. It took that bolt off. And I'm going to I'm going to demonstrate exactly what happened, but look, don't use your human strength. If you, if you don't have an uh, impact wrench, which I, I don't have, uh, don't try to even use your human strength. You'll end up stripping that bolt. It's not going to come off unless you have one hell of a breaker bar. Uh, but I'm going to show you a trick that takes it right off, and it's, it's, uh, it's no sweat. Okay, here's what I did. This bolt here... It appears to be a 19 millimeter bolt, although when I used my three quarters uh, socket, it seemed like it fit a little more snug, snugly than the 19 millimeter. I don't know how to explain that, but anyway, so I put the three quarter socket on there. I put it on a breaker bar, and I rested the breaker bar on top of the air conditioning, uh, the AC uh, compressor pulley. All right. The theory is, is you're going to have someone's crank the car for about two seconds and as the car cranks this thing's going to spin and the torque of the the uh, starter the engine is literally going to remove that bolt for you so again you put a 19 millimeter or a three quarters inch socket on there you use a breaker bar rest the breaker bar on top of the uh, AC pulley for for some leverage and then crank the car for about two seconds, it'll, it'll, it'll take that bolt right off. Uh, and then you can take it out with your fingers. Now, i got to mention something, because uh, I made this mistake. This is a real fuck-up on my part. Um, I, when I did this the first time, when I put the key in the ignition, I forgot that I had the, um, the fuel rail over there. And for a couple seconds, fuel sprayed out of those things and made a big fucking mess. So what you got to do is you've got to uh, go in the uh, fuse box and pull out the uh, I, there were two fuses uh, for the fuel pump there was one of those uh, relays and then there was an actual fuse I don't know what you'll have on your car but just kill the fuel pump okay uh, pull the fuse because otherwise you're going to get a big spray of fuel and it's going to create a big fucking mess which I had so don't make that same mistake because you the theory is you want to crank the car but of course you don't want fuel spraying out of there while this um, harmonic balancer is turning but that's it I mean, I did it, and this, this bolt came off in just seconds that way, and it uh, made it so much easier. I wanted to let you guys know that uh, I'm, I'm kind of out of order here because I haven't finished taking the harmonic balancer off. I need to go to the auto parts store and get a puller because this is a fucked up kind of harmonic balancer. 
it's not the normal kind where you put the bolts in and you pull it off using a normal one. This is the one you're going to have to use uh, the jaws to pull it off. So I got to I got to put that job on the back burner for the moment. But what I wanted to explain is I, I was looking at this bracket that holds the uh, motor mount on on this side, and there's a 15 millimeter bolt right here on the right right near the engine cover, and this thing's going to have to come out because. Uh, although it doesn't look like, look like it's attached to the head, it is in the way of the engine cover coming out. So in order to do that, this power steering line was in the way. So I had to disconnect this. Of course, it's leaking like a motherfucker, so I went and capped this off with a rubber band and a baggie. And of course, it's leaking from the, from the reservoir here, so I just jammed some um, paper towel in there. But anyway, once you do that, it does give you the room to get your hand in there to get a 15 millimeter wrench to get that top bolt of the um, uh, the mount bracket. And it looks to me like that mount bracket has, um, I don't know, I think a, the bolt obviously on top that I was just talking about, I think there's a bolt on the bottom, uh, a bolt on the side, but we'll, we'll, we'll get into that uh, later. But that was con kind of concerning because I, I couldn't see I could get my hand in there to get that, that bolt off without removing this. So I realize we're, um, I just spent a very miserable time getting this uh, passenger side transmission mount off, um, which was an attempt to loosen up that bracket. Um, here's what happened. I had a very tough time doing this. And I reached a point where I got this off by lowering the engine and lowering the engine cradle and back and forth. There's two bolts that go on to here to hold this on. There, there's two studs that come down from the frame and they, they go into here. There's a bolt that goes on to here, and, and keep in mind, the bolt that goes on to here comes out the other end of the frame and there's a nut on there. So you're going to need to uh, uh, have a helper or, or, or put something on there to hold that nut in place as you remove this. This is uh, um, self-explanatory, but you'll have to take this off. As far as the bracket that it connects to, that's the hard part, and I wanted to remove it. I, I haven't been able to because um, the bolt just won't pull out. The 15 millimeter bolt just won't pull out from the frame here. Plus, there's two bolts that wrap around uh, the transmission, right where it connects to the axle, and those won't come out. So what I did is I loosened everything, and I'm hoping that by loosening it, that gives me enough room to take the bolts out for the engine cover, because that's your ultimate goal you got to get the engine cover off. And if you can get the engine cover off without removing that bracket and just having it loose, and I guess that's going to be okay. We'll find out in time. But anyway, that's, that's the latest step. I also wanted to mention something I forgot in the last take, and that is the power steering pump hose that I removed. Uh, it's a 16 millimeter. Okay, um, I spent a big chunk of today working on this fucking bracket here trying to get this thing loose it wasn't easy and I still never got it off the 15 millimeter bolt is still up there pressed against this frame but at least I got it to slide around and you know I, I used uh, I don't know I used all kinds of stuff I lowered the engine cradle and raised it and lowered it and raised it I had to fool around with it it wasn't easy uh, there's a 15 millimeter bolt up there that uh, I'm no, I'm sorry. It's a 10 millimeter bolt uh, around the engine cover. That's very difficult to get off unless you move this this brace around. So you got to do that. I did take all the 10 millimeter timing chain cover uh, bolts off. You know, and it's that's that's not any fun. You can do it, um, but you know it takes time. You might spend 20 minutes working on just one bolt. But uh, anyway, that I. I I did that because I needed to buy some time because I, I need to go up to the auto parts store to get the harmonic balancer puller. You know, this the puller that I originally got was the kind that, you know, bolts on. And there's two, there'd be normally there'd be two bolts here that would that would bolt on that flange. This this doesn't have that, so you gotta use the jaws to pull this one off. So I'm gonna do that now. <laughs> I hopefully got the right tool to pull that off. And then once I pull that off. Okay, um, I'm taking the harmonic balancer off, but I just had a major fuck up here, and I'd like to tell you about it. I used the uh, the um, pullers, and evidently I didn't use it right. I, I don't know what the hell I was thinking, but you can see I just took a, a chunk out of the harmonic balancer, so that's a major fuck up. Um, anyway, this tool here, 
I rented from AutoZone. It said it was for a Chrysler, but it's working great now. I can see it's starting to come off. Um, I made the mistake of, of gripping it using the uh, jaws in the wrong place. You, I, want you, the, the, I want you to see where these, where the jaws grip on, you know, right, right there. Um, that's where you pull it off from. So anyway, that was a major fuck up on my part. But I want you to see, you know, how this works, and I, um, and where where the jaws actually go to pull the harmonic balancer off. I can't believe what I did. I don't know what I was thinking, but anyway, that's 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 the setup there. It'll be off in a second. And I also have to do some research as to the effect that chunk is going to have, and whether it's you know it's not going to be in balance anymore. Um, I might need to get a new one if I can even find one. I don't know, but maybe. I took the timing chain cover off, and uh, you can see there's the gasket there. That's going to have to be replaced. Um, the timing chain, or the engine cover is right here. You can see what that looks like. I'm, I'm going to end up cleaning that up. And it came off very easily. Um, but there you have it. You can see the timing chain sprocket there, the main one. But we'll have to fool around with all that and get those tensioners loosened up and everything tomorrow. But uh, at least that part's off. Um, I just uh, took out the three bolts. They're 13 millimeter bolts to hold on the oil pump. We're going to need to do to remove that in order to. Um, see the timing chain behind the oil pump so there's three 13 millimeter bolts you take those off I should mention at this point you know um, I don't know if you can see that little dot right there there's a timing mark there right there and then there's a timing mark right up there right there um, you know we're going to need to match these up you can see these devices here. These are the tensioners for the timing chain. Uh, some of them are tensioners, like, like this one here. You can see it's, it's going to be springy. Um, and then others are just shoes that kind of hold it in place, like that one there. But, uh, you know, we're going to have to become familiar with all that. The most important thing is we'll do this tomorrow and make sure this thing's at top dead center make sure all these timing marks line up because when we start taking shit off the worst thing that can happen is we put it back together I mean I just imagine what a disaster it would be to put this thing back together and not have the timing correct and having to tear down everything we've done just just to adjust the timing chain so you know this is one step you got to be real careful make sure all the timing marks are lined up and the camshafts are are lined up and all that stuff when you put all this back together. Okay, I'm getting ready to take these uh, the timing chains off. Um, I don't think I have to take the primary chain off, which is the one you see there. It's the secondaries up on top that connect to the camshafts. I think those are the only ones I have to remove. But what I wanted to show you is these timing marks. I had to turn the crank here using a ratchet, 19, 19 millimeter ratchet or three quarters uh, socket I mean um, until these timing marks lined up there's one there you can see there's one on the top a timing mark there and a timing mark there so you want these two timing marks to line up now they're gonna line up twice I think it's every six or seven revolutions but the important one according to the manual is when they line up and this one says LI right here and this one says LE and it's at a right angle with the head and then this one over here says LI and that one's supposed to say or RI and the other one's supposed to say RE mine has a dot I don't think mine says RE over there now I hope I'm doing this right, and I'll let you know at the end of the video if, I, if I'm not. But according to the manual, uh, 
this is this is where you can take the chain the chains off because it's a top dead center. Um, now, if you happen to have those two tiny marks down there match up, okay, down here, and you come up here, and this one says LE. Well, then you know you're on the wrong one. You're on the, the exhaust, the downstroke. You're not at top dead center. So this one here has to say LI. This one has to say RI. Plus these marks down here have to line up for you to know that you're at top dead center. Again, just to be clear, if you come back and this is LE, um, then, then, then you're, uh, you got, I think, six or seven more revolutions to go down there before they line up again. So again, this is the pro. I took out the um, tensioner for the uh, left side, left bank timing chain. There are two 10, 10 millimeter bolts to hold this thing on. And uh, this is the thing that, that's springy up and down. You, you, you know, you pull this. Well, I can't really do it holding the camera, but you pull this little lever up. And then this plunger comes down, then you put a little pin in there to hold it in, and that's what keeps it retracted. But I can't really, you know, I can't really demonstrate this with one hand holding this fucking camera. Um, but anyway, this, this lever comes up, you push that down, then you put a, a pin in there to stop this lever from springing back. And that's how you put it back in, and then this plunger here presses against the timing chain shoe and it, it's what creates tension in the in the system so anyway two two 10 millimeter bolts and this is what it looks like I don't know if you guys uh, want to replace these I heard some people recommend it but as I mentioned before I'm going on the cheap on this one because I'm not even sure it's going to work and uh, to a large extent I just am doing this just for shits and giggles just to say I did it because most people that I know of have said it can't be done with the all right, um, the timing chain just came off the sprockets when I took that tensioner off. Um, you're going to have a shoe here and a shoe there. You're going to have to remove in order to access the three bolts that hold the head on here. There's three little tiny bolts. They're, they're not as big as the head bolts, but they're, they're smaller and they're connected. Um, they hold the head on. So you're going to have to act, you have to remove these this shoe and that shoe in order to access the bolt that's under there. In order to do that, there's little um, access things here, you know, holes. And in order to, to get in there, you have to use a, an Allen wrench to pull these plugs out. And when you pull these plugs out, they give you access to the bolt to then remove this shoe. And you'll, you'll see that. But anyway, put a hex key in there and, you know, get these things out. That'll give you access to the 10 millimeter bolt and you can remove the shoe. So then you can access the, the head bolt. Uh, I took off, well, I dropped the timing chain down there, which is fine. Um, I took off the shoes using the two access points. Uh, no, I'm sorry, no, that's not true. I took off this shoe. That shoe, I only removed the top bolt on that side because it flops around. I don't, I don't think I need to take the other one off. Uh, I just needed access to get to these three head bolts. Uh, there are three 10 millimeter bolts, but you can't really access them unless you have, you know, you move the shoe. So this shoe I took out. This shoe I just loosened the one bolt to move it over to access the 10 millimeter head bolt. I think I'm going to leave that shoe in there if I can. So that's what I've done so far. And we'll go from there. Uh, the next step is going to be, uh, oh, I've got to remove this bolt down here, which is which is connects to the um, power steering line. I've got to take that bolt off. That connects to the head. And then I got to, I wanted to let you know, I did, re okay, um, I just want to let you know I took the head off. Uh, there was three water crossover bolts that I had to take off. There was, they're all 13 millimeter. Here's one here. There was one down in here. It's very hard to see. And then there was another one. Both of these 13 millimeter ones were um, were longer than this one here, but you'll kind of see where they go into the into the head. And I only needed to take three crossover bolts off so far, 
in order to get the head off. And there it is there. It's the exhaust manifold gasket. Um, and there's the head gasket. You can see the shoe I left on. I didn't need to take that off. Uh, I'm going to have to take a look at this thing, but you really can't tell with it on the car. Actually, sometimes you can't even tell, period, if it was bad or not. Um, but I know it was, because, I mean, there was no doubt this head gasket was in bad shape. So, there you have it. Here's the head. You know, it's uh, pretty dirty on the outside. But I'll take it and get it serviced. And they'll tell me whether it's completely straight or not. But uh, that's, that's it right there. It's pretty heavy. You know, I'm alone today, so I had to pick it up out of the car. It wasn't exactly easy to pick up. Things heavier than hell. Um, makes me really worried about how I'm going to get the back one out. But anyway, we'll just keep plugging along. And I wanted to give you a, a view of the back side too. So, hopefully, I mean, I don't see any huge cracks. I don't see any cracks, but that's for the experts to decide. I'm going to take it in and get it serviced. And um, hopefully, this head is still good. You can see there's something funny going on here. See how wet that one is? You know, i got to mention something. Uh, in the last take, I said there were three bolts that, that I had to take off over here on the water crossover. And I was wrong about that. There's only two. It's these two bolts right here. All right, so these are the two. got to look on the other side. One's a longer bolt, one's a shorter bolt. There was a third bolt I took off down there, but evidently that connects to the block. So uh, I, I take back what I said a minute ago. It's only two bolts that, that held this head on. Um, by the way, you know you're going to need a, you know gaskets here. We take this one off. So anyway, be aware of that. Just two bolts that hold hold it on on this side. Okay, it's been a couple days, uh, and uh, it's been raining like hell over here so I really haven't done any work on the car so if you see the the date at the bottom if there is one uh, I don't want you to think it's taken that long to get things done uh, or that I hit a stumbling block or anything it just I just it's been raining around here and I didn't put a lot of time into this car but um, I picked up where I left off today and there is something I need to show you um, there really is no way to access the uh, exhaust manifold bolts uh, for the rear head. Uh, you just cannot get to them. You can't get your hands on them. I mean, maybe you can get the top ones off, but not the ones on the bottom. And uh, for that reason, I really felt like I hit a roadblock until I did some research on the internet, and the people that have done this before have said you don't remove the rear exhaust manifold um, right away. You, you, you take the, the, the rear head out with the exhaust manifold attached and then you disconnect it when it's out of the car so that makes sense so what I want to show you is that exhaust flange back there um, let me see if I can point to it uh, god damn it um, this this you can see one bolt hole here now these are there's two 15 millimeter bolt holes to hold this on and you probably can't see the, the other one it's uh, it's down there but you've got to get underneath the car and take these two these two bolts out that connect the uh, exhaust manifold to the head and I gotta tell you it wasn't exactly easy in fact I had to tilt the engine a little bit to get an angle on it where I could even get the the socket on there to turn those bolts and of course they're welded on so that was a fucked up mess um, you know they're kind of welded on from the heat but anyway I got them off and then the theory is if, if everything works according to what people say this whole fucking head will come off with the exhaust attached and then you just do your disconnecting afterwards so that's uh, a trick you're gonna have to uh, 
know about because if you if you reach this point and then think you're going to have to take the exhaust manifold off like you did in the front, it ain't going to happen. Uh, you've got to take the exhaust manifold with you when you pull this head out. Now, I am underneath the car right now, and I want, I want to point something out. This bolt right here, I'm shining the light on, has to be turned because the transmission bracket is attached to the head. So you've got to get that, that bolt off. There's another bolt right there. I'm going to try to zero in on it. Right there, you're going to have to get that off too. So I've identified two bolts that you have to get underneath the car to take out in order to disconnect the uh, bracket for the transmission the bolts onto the head. So there's that one, and then there's this one here. I hope those are the only two. I'll let you know if there's more. But don't forget to take those off. Then over there in the corner, which you can't see, you'd have to get it from the top, you're going to have the camshaft position sensor. You're going to have to disconnect that. But I'll show you that from the top. I guess this is a good time, too, to just show you, now that I'm back up from the ground, where the camshaft position sensor is. It's right down there. There's a clip, you'll see it, you can't miss it, but don't forget to disconnect that because that, that camshaft position sensor is attached, you know, there to the head. So when you go to pull this fucker out, make sure that's disconnected. I'm going to take out these water crossover bolts over here and I hope that's it. I hope there's nothing else over there that connects to the head that I have to take off, but I'll let you know if there is when I, when I get there. So again, you take off those two bolts I showed you a second ago to hold the transmission to the head. Disconnect the camshaft position sensor. Uh, you'll probably have to disconnect the oxygen sensor down there. Don't forget him, because remember you're taking the exhaust manifold out. We know we're going to have to take off the, the, the bolts here, and I hope that's fucking it. And there aren't any other bolts over here. That we... Okay, I got to backtrack on something I said a minute ago. I took that bolt out that was here that connected the trans uh, mount to the to the rear head. But you know, I don't think that needs to come out for that shield. The, the other one, the one I pointed out to you a second ago, that, that bolt, I don't think that needs to come out. It looks to me right now like it's just that one there. Okay, so that's what I did. I think that other one just is a heat shield and that doesn't actually bolt to the head now that I got a closer look at it so please be aware of that just 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 take out that bolt there that fit and it's a 15 millimeter a lot of 15 millimeters one thing I want to show you too is that uh, you can see the take the water crossover off oh this fucker's blurry but there's two bolts there's one there and there's one there so you're gonna to need to take those two off but what worries me is now that I take a closer look, I disconnected the sensor, temperature sensor there. But if you can see those that bracket down there that connects to the head, those two bolts. Looks like I'm going to have to take those off. Because uh, there's a bracket there that connects to the head. It doesn't look like that's going to be any fun to get those off. And I don't know, it looks like there's a gap behind there. I don't know if there's another bolt, if there's really two bolts you got to take, or four bolts, or what the hell, but I'm going to figure that out. But it looks like that does have to come off. And again, that bolt there, and that bolt there for the water crossover. And hopefully that's it. We can get this fucker off and over to the shop. And I'm going to have the heads professionally pressure tested and checked and all that shit. And I have to tell you, after all this fucking shit I've been through, I think I take back something I said earlier on this video, that I was just going to put the regular head studs back in. Or not back in, I, of course I put new ones, but the original intent was just go ahead and put the, the um, I don't even know, I, I, I meant to say original, or the, the head bolts, you know, OEM head bolts. Uh, I wouldn't put the old ones back in. Uh, my intention was not to buy the studs, but after all this fucking work, 
uh, I'm at the point where I think maybe the best thing to do is to go ahead and either, uh, well, I, I can't put studs in while the head's in the car, or while the engine's in the car. You can't do that, but what you can do is you can put inserts in. Um, so if you're going to keep the engine in the car, you have the option of putting inserts and not using the original OEM head bolts. Of course, like I said, I, if I were to do that, I'd always buy brand new. I wouldn't put the old head bolts back in. But most people on the internet say that's not a good idea because they'll just pull out in time. So you got to use inserts. As you saw earlier, when I pulled my head bolts out, they all look good. I didn't see any aluminum come out with it. But given the amount of work this is, it'd really be a goddamn shame to go ahead and buy some new head bolts, put them in, don't use inserts, and then they pull out. This is a big jab. Might as well do it right. I guess it's worth coming back and mentioning something here so there's no fuck-ups. Uh, when removing these water crossover bolts, you know, the one there and the one over there. It looks to me like there's some kind of a, um, a ground strap on this. So when putting it back on, make sure you connect the ground strap on that one. Again, it's a little thing, but I just don't want there to be any fuck up, so don't forget to put the ground strap back on when you take it off. I'm still working on it. Um, I took off the uh, water crossover bolts. I think I already mentioned that. I still don't know what's going on over there. Uh, I, what I can tell you is this is I took those those two bolts off over there. Um, let me see if I can get it here. There were these two caps that fit on that bracket over there that fit on the end of it. Now these were just hand tight on my car. If they were really locked down, I don't know how I would have got them off because it's hard to get any leverage in there. I had my transmission worked on uh, about six, seven months ago. And I took it into the shop and they really did a shit ass job. I had to bring it back three times. And uh, evidently they just put these on finger tight, bastards. But in, 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 for the purposes of this project, that's good for me because it came off real easy. I don't know what more I'm going to have to take off. I might have to take more off over there, but I'll let you know. What I'm working on now is I'm disconnecting the timing chain. And what I realize is the timing chain will not slip off here unless I disconnect the camshaft position sensor and actually pull it out. Looks like there's a 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter bolt there. I'm going to have to unscrew. And, uh, and take the camshaft position sensor. I mean, not just disconnect it, but actually take it out. Because the timing chain will not slip over the sprocket unless that's out. So that's going to be the next project. And I'm in the process of taking the 10 millimeter, the three 10 millimeter head bolts out. Here, I, I, I already took this one out. I got the middle one out. That back one doesn't look like it's going to be any fun. But once I get that out, we'll see if maybe I can slide this head off. If not, there's something uh, over there that's holding it on. We'll have to get to the bottom of that. Wanted to give you guys an update. Uh, I took off the camshaft position sensor. That allowed the timing chain to drop down. I removed the shoe from back here. This one's still on, but it's loose. You know, same thing we did over here. Remember, we kept the shoe on, but we took that one off, so same thing. Um, I had a real hard time getting that 10 millimeter bolt loose over here. Just the angle that the head's on was not easy getting that off and, and I still it's still in there actually but it, it's it's at least loose <coughs> I'm gonna try to take the head out with the bolt in there and I'll just take the bolt out when I get the head out of the car because I can't seem to 
pick it out. Maybe if I had some tweezers or something, I could pull it out. I don't know if it's worth it right now because it's totally loose. These two weren't that bad. But again, you know, there's three 10 millimeter head bolts. And those are reusable. Uh, you don't have to buy those. Uh, you know, when you buy a head bolt set, those you could just reuse. So, anyway, I'm going to start playing around with this now. I don't know if, if I mentioned this, but you know, I've been lowering the engine cradle, raising it, lowering it, or you know, just depending on what's going on. It's you can see it's pretty high right now. I got the engine jacked up. I never did disconnect the engine cradle. It's just you know the bolts are loose, and I use the jack to jack up the engine or let it lower. But I'm going to lower it now because I'm going to have to got the rear head loose. And uh, I just want to let you know I'm going to have to disconnect this thing because it doesn't look like this head's going to clear this. Um, I, I can't even fucking think right now. You know, where, where these fuel injector fittings go, this wiring harness. So I'm going to disconnect this right now and hopefully I can pull this fucker out and see how things are going here. But I just want to let you know this is going to have to come out because otherwise you don't have enough clearance. And I still don't know what I'm going to do with this. Maybe I'll use a bungee cord. I'm working alone. My brother's fucking worthless. So I'm going to I'm going to use a bungee cord or something to hold this up as I try to pull the head off. And um, hopefully the next shot is with the head off. So stay tuned fucking me up the ass so I you know I don't know if the last segment um, recorded or not so I'm just going to do it again this is an old fucking camera from when I was a kid but uh, anyway I took the head off I'm glad to see this is at top dead center so the timing marks were correct this is what you want to see this is cylinder one this fucker is at top dead center um, when I took the head out I snapped the fucking um, timing chain shoe that I had left in. I should have taken it out, but that got snapped off. So I'll have to order another one. Fuck it. Uh, I disconnected this to give me the room to get the head out. As you can see, I took the exhaust manifold with it. You'll see that in a minute. That's where I disconnected it there. So I didn't have to do any more disconnecting there, but what I did if you can see those holes is I had to pull the head out and then pull it to the to the right to clear the, the, the there's two studs that are coming out of the head and they have to clear that bracket so you gotta wiggle it around a little bit but luckily I didn't have to take any more off um, here's the gasket and you know, I really can't tell. I, I'm not really good at forensically looking at this to see what... I mean, I know the fucking car had a bad uh, head gasket because I did a block test. It was overheating. You know, all the telltale signs. I mean, this looks real fucked up here. So you know the gasket's bad. But, uh, you know, there's some guys that like, like a forensic scientist get in here and they can show you all the little places that it was having problems. But this thing is just all fucked up. So, it's easy to see. Now, this car's got 285,000 miles on it. So there's a gasket you're looking at with 285,000 miles on it. It needed to be replaced. Anyway, again, I'm going to have to get a new shoe for the timing chain here. I think I'm just going to order new timing chains. I got the head off. Here's the pins that it goes over. These are important because they line everything up. You can see some coolant in the fucking cylinder. We're going to get rid of that shit. Um, so, there's the water crossover. Now we're going to need new gaskets here. Here's the head. Oh, fuck this thing. Fucking light just went out. Oh, one. All right, one on. Uh, you can see the exhaust manifold still connected. We're going to disconnect that. But uh, we'll take a look at the back side now.
Here's the back side. You can see uh, cylinder one is pretty wet. Valves are open there. So, you know, I'll take it up and have it professionally looked at and see if there's any cracks in the head. I'm not good at determining this. I'll take off the fucking manifold, of course. A lot easier to do here than with it on the head. Here are those two studs I was telling you about. When you pull the head off, you got to pull it pull these studs off, uh, well you gotta pull the, you pull the head up, you don't get it off the pins and then pull it towards the the passenger side front wheel to, to clear the bracket so you get so well, you, you know what I mean so I got both heads off, I got that one and I got that one over there and tomorrow this thing's going into the shop hopefully it'll come back with a good report and all cleaned up and then we'll start this whole motherfucking process over again. In my experience, whenever I've done a car job like, well, never like this, but other jobs, is that, you know, putting shit back on is a little easier. So, hopefully it will be. Anyway, that concludes the uh, head removal, heads removal, on the 2002 Cadillac 4.6 liter North Star piece of shit.